Hi kindergarten friends, it's Mrs. Herleman back again with another book to help us learn more about the rainforest. The book I'm going to read to you today is titled The Great Kapok Tree, A Tale of the Amazon Rainforest by Lynn Cherry. And I picked this book for a couple reasons. Number one, because it has beautiful illustrations and I think you'll agree with me when we read it that the illustrator did a great job of drawing the pictures and I, there's another reason why, and I'm going to share it with you in a minute, but before I do, I want you to look at the cover and decide what type of book do you think it is? Do you think it's fiction, which is make-believe, or nonfiction, which is going to teach us facts? All right. Well, we'll see if your prediction is right. I'm thinking my prediction is going to be that it's a fiction book because the pictures are illustrations and usually fiction books have illustrations. But it's also going to teach us a lot of facts and that's the other reason why I picked it because it is a fiction book. But at the same time, the author does a great job of still teaching us a whole bunch of new facts about the rainforest. Before we start reading, I want you to remember that whenever you read a fiction book at home, either on Epic or Bookshelf or from your own book library that you have at home, you need to remember to use this retelling hand or remember to do these five things when you're reading or after you're reading to make sure that you have comprehended or understand everything that the author is trying to teach you. So these are the things you need to remember or pay attention to. Who are the characters? What was the setting? Where did the story happen? Think about what happened at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. What was the problem in the story? And what was the solution? How did they solve the problem in the story? And all of these things, all five of these things, help you to understand the main idea of the story. So today when we're reading, I want you to pay attention to these five things, and I want you to make sure you're doing this at home as well when you're reading. So let's get started. The Great Kapok Tree. A Tale of the Amazon Rainforest. Make sure you pay attention to all the beautiful illustrations. And oh, here's that map. Remember the other day I told you our book today was going to have a map in it. So this map shows us all the tropical rainforests in the world. And the tropical rainforests are the ones that are really hot. So all the green on the map show you where all of the tropical rainforests are. So here's some, which is below us. Here's North America where we live. So we don't have any tropical rainforests near us. You'd have to go way down here into Mexico or down here in South America. And this is where this book is going to take place in the Amazon rainforest. And then there's some in Africa and then some on these islands over here, way over here in the Pacific Ocean, okay? And it also shows you a really good picture of the layers in the rainforest. And this book talks about some of the layers of the rainforest because there's so many trees in the rainforest that there's different layers. There's the bottom layer, which is the forest floor. And some animals make the home, their home in the forest floor. And then when you climb up a little bit, it's called the understory. You can see some animals live in the understory. And then you get the middle layer and you get up to the top, which is called the canopy, which is kind of near the tippy top of the trees. And a lot of animals make their home in the canopy. But then you get some trees that grow even taller than the rest of the trees and they emerge, which is why it's called the emergent layer. And they peek out of the top and some animals like to live up there. All right, and the Kapok tree is one of the trees that goes way up past the other trees and is in the emergent layer. And it says here, in the Amazon rainforest is always hot. And in that heat, everything grows and grows and grows. The tops of the trees in the rainforest are called the canopy. 
The canopy is a sunny place that touches the sky. The animals that live there like lots of light. Colorful parrots fly from tree to tree. Monkeys leap from branch to branch. The bottom of the rainforest is called the understory. The animals that live in the understory like darkness. There, silent snakes curl around hanging vines. Graceful jaguars watch and wait. And in this steamy environment, the great kapok tree shoots up through the forest and emerges above the canopy. This is the story of a community of animals that live in one such tree in the rainforest. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now, all was quiet as the creatures watched two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapok tree, but then he left. The smaller man took the axe he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack! You can see where he struck it, right there. Whack, whack! The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop, chop, chop! The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack, chop! Whack, chop! Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and the hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the kapok tree and he slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the ax had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slipped very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. And he called him, I don't know if you noticed, he called him Senor. And Senor is Mr. in Spanish. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in this kapok tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. So do you see that we're right? It is a fiction book because the characters, the animals are talking to the man, which really can't really happen. But that's an important part of the book because they're telling the man some important things. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the way of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rain comes, the soil will be washed away, and the forest will become a desert. A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush, and soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smothered, smoldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. Is he right? Is, this, is that tree a home to lots of animals? I think he is. 
A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory. No one had seen him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Oh, wow. I didn't even think of that. Trees make oxygen. And we all need oxygen. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends upon what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now she did not reach the ground. Or only now she did she reach the ground. Plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? A child from the Yamamo tribe was who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him star staring were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers and he felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sound for the creatures were strangely silent. Probably wondering what he will do next. What do you think he's going to do? The man stood and picked up his ax. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. But suddenly he stopped and he turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated, then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. And here's a note from the author, Lynn Cherry. She says, Dear I wrote the great Kapok tree to let the world know what happens to the rainforest creatures and to the entire planet when rainforests are destroyed. I hope that after reading this book, you will help save the rainforest. The great Kapok tree is about the Amazon rainforest, a tropical rainforest. But we have a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest of the United States that we must protect too. Please care for Mother Earth. Together, we can make a difference. So this book kind of goes along with what we learned about last week, Earth Day, and how we need to protect the Earth. And it also, at the same time, teaches us lots of things about the rainforest, which is what we're learning this week. 
So let's think back to the main idea. What was the main idea of our story? And I have a graphic organizer here that I made. Kind of looks like a little town with some houses. And it talks about all those important things we talked about that you see in fiction books. So let's go down Story Street and talk about our book. The title of the book was The Great Kapok Tree and the author was Lynn Cherry. So where was the setting of this story? Yeah, it was in the Amazon rainforest. And who were the characters? There were two men, and the one was the main character. They called him Senor. And then the other characters that were also very important were all the animals of the rainforest. And then there was also a rainforest child who came at the end. And remember, most fiction books have a problem. So what was our problem in our story? I think the problem was the man was trying to chop down the kapok tree, which was the home to all the animals. So how did they solve their problem? What did they do? So the solution is how they solved the problem. All of the animals talked to the man about how important the trees and the rainforest are to all of them and to the world. And these kind of tie in, the problem and the solution, kind of tie in with the beginning and the middle because the man was trying to chop down the tree at the beginning of the story. And then all the animals talked to the man about why they thought it wasn't the tree was important in the middle. And then down here I put, but in the end, they made the man realize that what he was doing was wrong. And he changed his mind and he walked away and he didn't chop the tree down. So let's think about what the main idea was. The main idea was we need to save the rainforest because the rainforest is home to many plants and animals. So today what I want to do is I want to do a sort. I want to do a sort about things that might live in the rainforest or things that might live in our own habitat, which is what? What's our habitat that we live in? The forest. So I've got some pictures here and let's see if you after reading this book, this book helped us to know what animals and plants live in the rainforest, and we already learned about our habitat, the forest, so hopefully you'll be able to help me decide where they go. So let's look. Here's the first one. It's a beautiful flower. Which habitat do you think beautiful flowers live in? Yeah, I think they might live in the rainforest. We saw lots of beautiful flowers in this book we just read. Let's see what's next. Looks like a squirrel, maybe even a chipmunk. Where do you think a squirrel or a chipmunk would live? Yeah, we see them around here all the time. I know I do, so I'm going to put that in the forest. I think they live in the forest habitat. How about a tree? What do you think? I think it probably could go in both. Yeah, I think it probably could go in both, but I'm thinking we might want to put it over here because the forest, that's what the forest is made up of, is mostly trees that look like that. And then we have a deer. Where do you think deer live? Where would their habitat be? Yeah, I have them in my backyard all the time. Oh, the next one I see is a jaguar. Where do you think the jaguar would live? Yeah, I thought we done, think we saw one today in our book, didn't we? In the rainforest. All right, let's see about this plant. Yeah, I'm thinking that might go in the rainforest. And look at the leaves of that plant. What, the, what shape do they look like? hearts, right? And I posted in the description of this lesson a video that you can watch after this that takes you on a field trip into a rainforest and they tell you why the plants in the rainforest have heart-shaped leaves. So if you watch the video, you'll learn why the leaves are shaped like hearts. I thought it was a really interesting fact. So we're going to put that plant in the rainforest. And then... Here's a monkey. Where do you think monkeys live? We don't have any around here, do we? So I think they go in the rainforest. How about the toucan? We don't have any of those either, and I think we saw one of those in our book today. How about a mushroom? 
mushroom. Do we see mushrooms around here? Yeah, I think we could. And how about a raccoon? Do we see raccoons around here in our habitat? Yes, we do. So they live in the forest. And then, oh, let's see here. How about a tree frog? What do you think? Oh, those, we've seen lots of those in our books on the rainforest. And then how a woodpecker. Do we see woodpeckers around here? Yeah. So there we have it. Good job. You helped me sort. So look at the animals and plants that live in the rainforest. So I'm hoping that you saved your tea chart that we made the other day because now after we read this book, and maybe after you go and watch the video on the field trip to the rainforest, or even you could add some of the animals from our sort that we just did, maybe you could add some more animals and plants that live in the rainforest. And if you didn't take a picture and send it to your teacher yet, I highly encourage you to do that. Take a picture of your tea chart, take a picture of your sort that you're going to do and send them to your teacher so that she can see all the hard work that you're doing at home as you learn about the rainforest. And I'm going to also encourage you to do one more thing. I want you to practice becoming that star writer that we were working so hard on becoming. And today, I want you to see if you can write a sentence in the rainforest, I can see and if you look at my sentence, ooh, I started with an uppercase letter and I left finger spaces between my words and the only letters that were uppercase were my first letter and my first word and then up, oh, look, here is the word I. All the rest of my letters are lowercase, so you should be practicing making yours lowercase and then you're going to finish the sentence with something you can see. And then what are you going to put at the end of your sentence? Yes, a period. And when you're done with this, you could draw a nice picture of a lot of things that we learned that live in the rainforest. And then take a picture of this and send it to your teacher. And wow, your teacher will be impressed with all of your hard work from today. All right. You keep learning about that rainforest. Have fun, boys and girls, and we'll see you soon.